If you want success in the music industry as an artist, there is a three part unavoidable formula that every single artist has to take advantage of. Whether you're signed or on a label, you consider yourself super DIY, independent, underground, whatever you call it, you must do this to be successful on your own terms. I'm gonna play this clip from Andy Kenny Beats. He's gonna touch on some key parts and then we're gonna break it down point by point. Who is your best dressed friend? Who is your friend with the best taste? Who is uh, your smartest, most money focused homie? You're good at music. And I and you might be one of these people who knows about treatments and knows about how to hit the internet and knows how to edit that TikTok video and knows how to answer that your fake email and pretend you're your own manager. You might be one of those people, but I do music, I'm a music person. First of all, I love the fact that he knows his lane. Yep. I could try to do everything, but really I want to do this music thing. There's nothing wrong with that. I know a lot of artists get slack for that. There's nothing wrong with that, but you do still have to work yourself into a position. But we're going to talk about this and, and everything he, he talks about when we get into the formula part. Didn't know how to create value for myself until I had a team of people around me all doing things equally as good as I'm doing the music, a.k.a. the artwork, a.k.a. how we're presenting this to people. Ten years ago... When I was making music and I was in my teens, people would say all the time, if it's good enough, people will hear it. If it's good enough, it'll get out there. If it's good enough, someone's going to find it. That is in 2022. Please don't tell a young creator that. <laughs> you tell people that? Never. Never? <laughs> if it's good enough, people will find it. All right. words, I'll never leave my lips. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're going to let this finish out and then we're really going to dig in. But he already talked about like my friend who's good at dressing, my friend who's good at money or whatever, right? There's these different categories in terms of team. So we also are going to touch on the key. I want to touch on the key to actually building a team, being a part of someone, uh, artist teams before, helping build artist teams. Please don't say that to a young musician. You're a if you say that to anybody. It's not true. With the amount of stuff coming out now and the amount of push yeah. and the amount of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. infrastructure on these all right let's break it down let's get straight into it what are these parts that matter when it comes to creating success for an artist like he talked about building a team and all these great elements that allowed him to get his value in the industry great cool he said i didn't understand my value truly until i had all these people on my team mm -hmm. but what artists don't quite understand and i think most people don't really understand this in general even outside of music when you just first get out into the real world yes you might have value your mind you might be able to think up some amazing things but that's just one part of the formula to create the value for yourself is different than just creating something of value okay yeah. so i okay. can create something of value that's the song the product in this case but then it's attached to me how do i create value for myself Creating value for myself is the second part of the formula where you have to make sure that value is seen and perceived. Mm -hmm. That's a whole different process. And then you have to understand how to capture that value and execute afterwards. Okay. So I can create the music and I can be the artist producer responsible for all of this like Kenny Beats, right? Killing the Game done a lot of great things. I can be the person responsible for this product and there's this raw material that is appreciated maybe even by some people. But the people that I want to do deals with, whether it's a brand sponsor, whether it's a potential label, whether it's a potential investor, whether it's a venue owner who might want to book me, but they got to make sure that if they go and spend some money in on promotions or book out a venue, it has to be able to sell out, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do I make sure these people understand my value? That's an entirely different process. And then how do I actually then execute, right? Do the moves to capture that value. That might look like admin on some sides. That might look like negotiation on some sides, putting the logistics together to actually get there, you know, whatever's necessary in that case. There's these three major buckets and it's hard to do all of these things. And one, because he even talked about, even if you're one of those guys who you understand digital, maybe how to get some views and, or you can create your own content or you can record your own music mix and master your own stuff that's still on the creation of the raw material the product and improving the product side of things yeah, but in yeah. terms of improving the perception of the product and making sure it's understood which is the value on the other end of this the spectrum that hasn't even touched that part yet that's a lot more work to do let alone oh handling the logistics whether that's answering emails <laughs> you know what i mean scheduling things out negotiating whatever that looks like so this is where i feel like artists begin to be in some cases overwhelmed when they understand all these things are at bay and then there's some of them that are naively overconfident thinking that because you know how to create more value or because you could do all these things diy you understand are in a position of getting all of your value that is not possible by yourself it's just not yeah and no, i agree i think the big part too is understanding what is even valuable to these different parties yeah which is very rare that an artist comes into the game immediately knowing what that is that's, that's usually something afforded to people that 
with that. Mm -hmm. Maybe had some type of like background in music already, was already close to another musical situation. But that's 1% of the base or the, the group even comes into the game knowing like, okay, this is what I need to do. The vast majority, the other 99%, is really just kind of bumping their head and, and figuring it out along yep. the way, right? Like yeah. how many stories have you heard from artists that maybe maximize a particular space or learn how to maximize a particular space, but it wasn't until maybe they were accidentally thrown into it or someone around that was like, hey bro, you should you should look into that sync thing. Like you got that one commercial, like you could go mm -hmm. deeper in here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I think of when I hear Kenny Beats talking about the team necessarily building value. I don't think it's always as simple as like, oh, they created this value. I think in most cases it's like that. But I think sometimes even having somebody around you that can identify opportunity or identify value is very important, right? Like, like I was talking to an artist recently and they were telling me they wanted to start doing some shows and they was asking me about, you know, pretty much kind of what you just said, like what are some things that a promoter would care about? And so we kind of raffling stuff off and they, they mentioned that they got like an email list of like three, 400 people and I was like, they got an email list of three, four hundred people. That's crazy. I was like, bro, like you should be able to go to damn near any promoter in your city and at least have a, a case. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that was something where they were like, oh, they didn't understand how that tied to the show. I gave them the the whole spiel about you know email campaigns and text campaigns and reach, and that was something where they were like, damn, I didn't even know like this was powerful for that in that situation. They were more so on the email collection tip, thinking about like e-commerce and like selling stuff to the people, yeah. not thinking about like, oh, I can tell this person like, oh, I have three hundred people I can contact directly and you know, X amount might come out of here. So sometimes it's not even just about me as this person on your team creating the value for you. Sometimes it's me saying like, hey, there's some value over there that you either weren't thinking about or didn't even know existed. Yeah, man, let's talk about that because the value is really misunderstood from an artist or just inexperienced person's True. vantage point because there's so many different stakeholders. Or there's different people that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Booking agent doesn't have the same perception of value as a sync person. Yep. Sync person doesn't have the same perception of value as a manager, as a label, because they're pulling from different parts. Yep. And it's also about the way of doing business. So let's like break that down for just artists, right? To help people understand managers. So we could start with booking agent because you touched on booking agent. If I'm a booking agent, I care about multiple things. One, I said, oh, I want to be able to sell out a show. Mm -hmm. Hearing that you have an email list, that helps increase my confidence. Confidence, yep. right? That you might be able to help sell out this show. Because yep. a lot of booking agents learn, oh, this person have a bunch of followers. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. So they have an email list. That's something real. That increases my confidence and that increases my perception of your professionalism. Yep. Also, how do you handle your th yourself? Are you responding professionally? Do you have a manager or not? That means a lot to a lot of people, actually. Oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, many labels, actually, I don't know if artists know this, but there's a lot of times labels will have in the contract that you have to have a manager. You have to have a manager because they understand how difficult this business is and you can't do it alone. If they're investing in you or giving you any money or even loaning you any money, they still want their money back. And you having a manager means you're in a, posi a better position to be in success. And I'm not even talking about like a sketchy situation where the label is giving you one of their man managers that's a homie and they're screwing you over. I'm talking about just a tried and true, hey, if I give you money, of course I want this money back and I need to make sure you have the ability to help get my money back. And I know you can't do this alone. I know you believe you can but the way this business is set up the majority can't yes there's those few artists that like have a crazy moment they go viral or something or they just have this path that's worked out for them and they shout from the mountaintops hey you can do it exactly like me but most cases aren't that yeah, yeah. so from a, even a label standpoint what does value look like and then hey i'm going to care more about your streams but if i'm not getting any money from your merch or these other areas then why do i care about that that's not where the value is so i'm focused on the product and the music and your ability to sell the music increase your stream of the music uh, agency so we can speak on that since obviously the agency and i think there's a lot of misperception that i've seen a lot of artists encounter to, to dealing with us and others there's different levels of agencies there's different levels for every position right mm -hmm. you might have an agency that's like brand new and they're just trying to cut their teeth so your value for them is they get some experience yep Right? Case studies, yep. They have another case study. They got to see what things look like. Then you might be dealing with an agency that know how to do campaigns to an extent, but more importantly, they're just trying to like hit as many licks as possible. They're not doing a bad job. They're doing an okay job or maybe even a good job, but they're really just like, all right, let me get as much money as possible. Yep. 
and I'm just gonna run as many campaigns as possible. Then you have people who are more so like, I wanna make sure I'm working campaigns with artists who have a certain level of quality of music because if I just work with any artist and it doesn't go anywhere and the music isn't good. My success rate go down. My success rate goes down yeah. <laughs> and I'm trying to work with quality art so I can push that and I can put that on my scoreboard. One, that I work with quality art in general and it's cool because I can actually talk to people. Hey, I work with this artist and listen to this song, All right? And it's cool because when it becomes successful, I can then also speak to that success because I helped that thing become successful. And then there's the, the people who are in that position or higher also have a sense of life, quality of life. If you're gonna be, be a artist, a client that creates headaches that aren't aren't needed, right? it's like, ah, rather not work with you yep. because they already have a lot of work. They already have a lot of business. It's not necessarily about, am I gonna hit another lick or am I gonna have another moment? I already have success that I can speak for my own. I'm looking for an opportunity to not only be able to get some money for my services, but more so create another success and hopefully build a relationship that will be valuable where we can just continue to build. All right, all right, I gotta take this quick second to make a major announcement. If you want personal help growing, I'm talking about getting a marketing campaign ran for you or a consultation for absolutely free from people who have done this. I'm talking about billions of streams under our belt, blowing up artists with content, advertising, PR campaigns, pre-TikTok era, post-TikTok era, on all the platforms, we know how to do this and we have a limited opportunity for absolutely free. If you go to Contra Brand Agency, that's www.contra brand.agency. And you can check out the link in the description too. We have a limited opportunity for anybody signing up within the next 30 days to be considered for free consultation or marketing campaign with us, no strings attached, but it is first come first serve. So if I was you, I would sign up ASAP. Go to www.contrabrand.agency to be considered. The earlier, the better, because we're only gonna be able to do this with a limited amount of people. Absolutely free though, for real. Back to this episode. Yeah, and I think at that level too, they're usually looking for like unique W's, right? Unique, yes. yes. Like someone that's been in a position that long is probably damn near had every W that can be had. And so at that level, you're like, all right, I need a W that either I haven't had before, or like you said, it's something that I have a little bit more of a flip for, right? Right. And so I, I see a, a bigger vision for like what I do with this if it, do, if it and goes And that's how right. you can sell yourself mm -hmm. so to, in some ways. It's like, hey man, work with me. Like this is an opportunity. You haven't worked with this type of artist before. Are you interested in, in working with that yep. and it's okay right if your value that you offer doesn't line up with the value that that person needs by the way in the industry it doesn't even mean that they don't see you as something valuable it's just that hey they might have to be selective with their time and you just don't represent the opportunity that they're looking for in the same way there's people that you don't necessarily choose to work with because there's things that you are looking for it's no different and it's not something that should be taken personal here's another thing so we talk about the booking agents we talked about labels we talked about agencies sponsors the way sponsors see value is can you help me access this audience or can you help me represent the image that I need to to access that audience and this is something that artists miss out on have you ever noticed that there's some artists who don't have huge followings that can get consistent brand deals mm -hmm. why is that because maybe aesthetically they've truly developed and put in the work to represent what that specific niche is looking for. It's no different than a model. Like when you hire these actors and models who don't have audiences, right, for commercials or whatever, you're not always looking for the audience. Sometimes you're looking for a look yep. or a way of doing things, a certain personality. So if you can embody that, if you have that type of personality look and it makes sense for your particular niche, then do that. Just be dope in the way that you can be dope. And that'll actually give you brands and sponsorships and partnership deals that you wouldn't even expect at the level that you have. Now, of course, as you build more and more of a base then that just allows you to get more and more money but you don't have to necessarily wait to get those type of partnerships it's just about finding the people that help that can help you link with those partnerships yeah bro it's like looking for people that's looking for chickens and then making sure you got the chickens to sell you know what i'm saying that's how i look at it <laughs> i don't know if that you know that might go over some people's head yeah, that's a country ass analogy bro. <laughs> <laughs> but now I always think about man like every time I have the value conversation with an artist I always give them our example our story but there was a situation where we were working with an artist that we were we were very close to the day to day team it was like like our people like we fuck with them and this particular artist had just signed a label deal and I think got an advancement through a publishing company and they wanted to you know break a little bread with the with the agency and have us run a campaign I don't know if you remember it but we were, it was me you the artist I think you were on that call the manager and then the label and we 
were like going crazy about like how we were gonna like scale their audience internationally and we were gonna build out these sales oh, funnels. It's starting to come to me. Yeah, okay, we were gonna okay. build out these funnels to, to sell their merch and like we had this whole game plan about returning the, the marketing investment through these these oh, different yeah, yeah. channels. What ended up happening is the artist was very excited. We assumed the whole team was excited, but a week later we learned we got put off the project. <laughs> and then we like, we're confused. We're like, damn bro, like everybody loved the ideas. The artists seemed happy. Like I said, the artists and their team were like good people of ours. So it wasn't like a weird situation where we couldn't talk to them. Yeah, we, about to, we were about to turn this thing up, man. Yeah, we, we wanted the best for them because they were the homies. Yeah, because they were the homies, right? And then I'll never mm -hmm. forget, you know, actually it might've been on that call. Now I can't remember. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it, it was on, on the call, call, right? It was the, on the call. The, 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 the labor owner blatantly said to us, hey, that merch and that international shit y'all talking, we don't care about that because it has nothing to do with our bottom line. And the artist isn't hiring you, the label is hiring you. Mm -hmm. And I tell that story because that was the first time, I don't know if you had ever been through that, but that was the first time in my career where I was like, oh shit, like I'm not, I wasn't hired to be on the artist side. You know what I'm saying? Like I was hired to be on the label side. Mm -hmm. And the things that the artists are finding valuable from this campaign is not the same thing that the label is looking for, looking to call valuable from this campaign. And so, you know, we talk about it from an arts context, but it really is an industry thing. Like sometimes you can have an idea or a game plan or a thing and it be extremely valuable in one space, but then you move it, you shift it slightly over to even an adjacent space and all of a sudden it becomes worthless. That's you know it. What I'm saying? That's <laughs> it. I use artist music for that same example all the time. Yep. All right, on a streaming platform, you get pennies on a dollar, less than pennies on a dollar, right? Sync deals, you're automatically in many cases moving into the thousands mm -hmm. and you can get hundreds of thousands. You're selling for a concert just to hear that music performed instead of streamed. That looks different as well, yeah. right? It could be $50, $30, $200, whatever that number is. Your music is constantly changing value based on the packaging and the particular way it's being delivered is no difference than when you're talking to one person versus another. And But that was a perfect example of, again, it's not just an artist message. Message. It's the managers, the labels, the marketers. You have to always understand the value of the people on the other side of the table yep. and also your value and what value you're supposed to be bringing in that moment. That's what it all comes down to because like you said, yeah, it's like we got hired by the label and it doesn't mean that the goal for the label was something I was going to screw the artists over. It's just like, hey, we're focusing on growth over here right now. Growth over there is cool. Go do that shit. But what we have to spend our money on is what's going to get the ROI in the category yep. that we make our money from. Yep. It's no difference than me if I'm like, I got experience in merchandising. You know, I worked at some clothing companies, built some clothing brands. Friends, and then I say, hey, man, Ja'Cory, I love your music and I love what you do as an artist. I got experience in this merch category and I want to help you in that category. I'm going to front some money, give you $50,000 to really kick this off, build the initial inventory, okay. advertise, all that stuff. All right. All right. And then a week later, you come to me in a conversation telling me how you about to get some real cheap streams in Brazil and run up the dollars that we just gave you. You're like, uh, bro, I don't have nothing to do with those streams. Dreams. Yeah. I appreciate that. I'm here because I love the music and I think they will love the music too. <laughs> However, this $50,000 needs to go into the merch. You need to sell some t-shirts. <laughs> that is what we're, <laughs> <laughs> that is what the agreement is on. That's a separate conversation that we want to talk about that. So it's just understanding that over and over again, whether it's a label, whether it's the distributor, whether it's your manager, because we've seen this with managers. I go back to an example when I was on a call with an artist and their manager and they were coming in for a marketing campaign. And my job as the marketer is what do these people want there's different goals it streams is it fans is it views or social media following increase i'm always looking for the goals and i'm instantly realizing there's a disconnect this artist and this manager they don't want the same thing for this artist's career i can hear it but hey bro that ain't my business i'm i'm brand new i'm just listening i'm not here to save a relationship they'll figure it out this is my first time talking to them i don't know nothing about this them outside of this conversation but i can hear it one cared about things more on like a publishing songwriting specific side uh, this man wanted her to be a songwriter yeah I know she about. wanted to be an artist artist yeah right she wanted to be beyonce <laughs> 
Taylor Swift on stage, but that manager didn't care about none of that. But you have to pay attention to those things. Understand what the value somebody else is looking for. Sometimes you can give that person that value and get the value you need and it becomes a great deal. Sometimes it doesn't work out because you're only willing to focus on that value. And management, ah, that's kind of tough. That's too close. I can go get a contract with a publisher or do my publishing admin, right? It makes sense that you only care about the publishing. But if I want a career as a front facing, you know, performing artist on stage, recording artist, that full 360 version of artists we think of, eh, my manager only caring about me as a songwriter, that's gonna be tough. Yep. So you gotta be willing to understand your value, to, the value that people are looking for to then increase your value so then you can execute on that value and capture that value. The tidbit I wanna leave on though is the team. And maybe we have to rehash this. It's probably best to do like a team video once a year. But <laughs> <laughs> starting with you as the artist, you have this brand, this packaging of your music and the type of branding, right? Audience and positioning you want in the industry. You have to sell that vision to people, right? Starting with the manager those closest to you. Part of selling that vision is creating your look, whatever that look is, yeah. all right? Some people's look is no look and that's fine, but that's a part of the look. So even if y'all think y'all aren't trying, trust me, everybody outside of you sees it as a look. Yeah. <laughs> it's a package whether you want it to or not. Creating the music, creating a look, that's step number one. But then also, where do you wanna go? And then creating some level of momentum so people can see that it's real, that it's connecting. It's Once you do concept. that, yeah, just a little bit of proof of concept. Doesn't have to be a lot to get the first people on board, especially if they really deeply believe in your music and what you have going on, then you might be able to sell a manager because people have to be able to see the value in being involved with you, period, right? People got to see how helping you achieve your goals and dreams will help them achieve their goals and dreams. Yes, especially at a ground zero level when we're talking yeah. about sweat equity at the beginning. Yeah, I'm no not, money. Yeah, I'm not getting <laughs> any money, right? I'm just getting energy, good times, good vibes, and some late nights and headaches. Yeah. At the end of that rainbow, I want to be able to see something, especially if I don't have a deep relationship with this person already. There has to be something there. Now, oh, if you're just paying for a service, you just pay somebody $500 to execute a campaign for you. I mean, that's probably good enough. But when we talk about really getting people involved on your team, what people are looking for, like team members, you have to be able to create a vision and a opportunity for them, just like you want opportunity through them. Mm -hmm. It has to be mutual. Everybody wants help, but nobody wants to be helpful. That's facts. Spitting, brother. Let's see if Kenny got one more thing to say before <laughs> we get up out of here, bro. Let, let, let Kenny finish his preaching. On these apps for algorithms and this and that, it's not gonna see it through if people don't have a way to get interested in it. So you gotta have some reel or video or artwork or some way for people to come to your page and feel something that makes them wanna click play. They gotta feel something. The fans gotta feel something. The managers gotta feel something. The publisher. The publisher the gotta marketer, feel something. Everybody. It's all about value. And hopefully from this conversation, just hearing the complexity of how value gets perceived on all these different parts of the game helps you understand why it's hard to do that without a team, especially from an artist. There's many industries where you can have a huge, tall, thick tree, and then at the top, the branches spread out and you have to deal with these other things. Mm -hmm. But in music, it's more like a little bush where the branches are at the ground. You're spreading out in five, six different directions before you even get any altitude. Nah, that's facts, yeah. That's and good. shit, that's stressful. <laughs> and I get it. I get it. <laughs> Give y'all something to think about. Uh -huh. This is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. I'm Brandman Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we out. Peace. Appreciate you for watching. If you like content like this, you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at nolabelsnecessary.com. And the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is we don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information. There's play by play and courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. And you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members, and it's free just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.